Okay guys, I'm going to run you through some of the negative forms of taping before I show you how I tape. And one of the bad ones is where they take the tape here and they wrap it around here. Getting three nice white bars, which is kind of cool looking, if that's the look you're going for. You got the three bars, three bars on the bottom, three bars on top. It kind of, if you look at it, it really binds your finger from really closing. I'm going to take this bottom one off and you can see the difference just by removing the bottom one. What a difference. And it's still really tight, but here there is no pressure whatsoever. It creates a lot of extra binding which cause a lot of extra stress on the joints, at least for me. Then the next one, which I really don't get, is when they actually tape on the joint itself. Granted, if, my, if I have an injury to the actual joint itself, sure, I'm gonna wanna tape it, but, but for grappling purposes, this is, this is, this is really bad. Uh, but I see it done, and I don't know why. And if these are a couple of ways that people are taping, I can understand why they'd say pa taping does not work because those two forms of taping truly don't work for grappling. And then the next one that I don't really understand, they take the tape, they wrap it around the bottom, then they put an X on the bottom under the knuckle, and they wrap it around and they come back and they do it a couple times and I don't understand what they're doing. I understand what they're trying to attempt to do, but I really don't understand because when I really stretch that down, it, I kind of have a grip, but I still don't have a grip. It, it, it's really a poor grip and it immobilizes the joint pretty well if that's what I'm trying to accomplish. But in all reality, as I try to force that, force my grip tight, it's actually causing stress again on the joint and on those ligaments. Not good. Unless I'm trying to immobilize that. But there are other ways of doing, doing taping that would be more appropriate if that's the case. Now, I'm going to show you Uncle Larry's taping method. And this is just by trial and error. This is what I came up with that worked for me with my arthritis and all the discomforts that come from grappling. And you guys know what those are. So I start in the center in between the two knuckles and I start crossing over immediately. I pull the tape up and over, making a straight bar on the back. So it almost looks like you have two bars right there already. Now I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna slightly bend it. This is preloading my finger as I retape. X right on the bottom of the knuckle and I come back over the top of my original tape, securing the tape down now. Now I come back over the, that last little knuckle and loop over the tip of my finger, keeping some angle to my finger. I'm preloading my finger. And again, we come back, cross under, back over, creating that middle bar, and we're back down at the bottom X, and we just duplicate what we just did, keeping tension on the tape and keeping our fingers bent mildly. And you do this until you get back down to the bottom. I'm at the bottom X, and then I come back to the top. Now you could stop here, but I found what really helps out to, to secure the tape, make sure if you're doing a lot of grappling over a couple hours, so make this tape work even better, is that I take a loose wrap now. Up to this point, we've used tension on the tape. At this point, there's gonna be no tension, and this is just gonna be an anchor. Nothing but an anchor with no tension. And then I just tear it off. And you notice how I tore it off on the top. Another thing you'll note, 
when I tape, I tape all my fingers in the same direction on each hand and I stop at the same spot. So I always know where to look for the edge of the tape to unwind it to get rid of it when I'm done. Now if you look at my finger, you can see it has a curve, but when I press on it, it barely goes straight. Now my middle finger, when I press on that, it bends backwards. Let me turn the camera, turn it over this one so you can see a little bit better. So here's my middle finger. It bends backwards quite a bit. Let me get my hands out of there. How's that look? And when I take this one, it has a curve. It's preloaded. And when I stretch it, it will not hyperextend, which is where most of the injuries result from the snapping and pulling this, that rapid snap, expanding those fingers is where we get a lot of those injuries. So that is my method of taping, my reasoning for it, the logic behind it, and the testing. And you can see I have good grip. I still have a good grip. I have great mobility on my fingers, but it's being protected from hyperextending where most of those injuries come from. One of the things I'd like to address is how well a tape does or does not adhere to skin or even to itself and dealing with the tape when, when, we, when we're sweating. And this is two primary examples. This tape right here is monkey tape, and this right here is your typical store-bought uh, sports tape. They've been, I've worn them the same amount of time today just to see how well they would hold up, uh, washing my hands, you know, just doing regular work, not grappling, not working out, just, just wearing them. And you'll see how this one here has already started coming apart. That's not good. And the other thing about this particular sports tape is that it doesn't adhere very well. See how easily, easy that comes off? It just comes off. Now here's the monkey tape. It's been on the same amount of time and the end is right here. Let me dig it up. Here's the edge. Now this does not come off like that other tape. This tape here feels like it's attached to your skin. So that means it's not going to be slipping and sliding and falling off. It adheres very well to the skin. Even after washing your hands, it, it stays in place. And that's just something to consider when you're buying tape. If you're going to tape guys, buy quality tape, buy tape that works. And I highly recommend that when you buy tape, buy just one roll, test it out and see if it works for you. If you're pleased with it, if you're not pleased with it, then shop elsewhere. Don't go buying one of these three, four, or five roll packs of a product, a brand that you know nothing about because some athlete or somebody advertised they use it. So I'm just gonna encourage you from, from an old man, buy a single roll, see how it performs, and decide for yourself what's best suited for you. Now, I wanna go ahead and start going into a deeper explanation about taping. I have arthritis, my fingers hurt all the time, and the numerous methods of taping that I'd seen online, uh, I had tried, and they really didn't work. And the biggest problem was either they didn't work at all, or they worked, but would bind my knuckles, and it caused undue pressure, horrible pressure, on the ligaments and actually creating more damage, longer recovery times. And this is just over a period of time that I did, did different types of testing per finger and rolling. Some fingers were recovering, some were not. And I came to the conclusion after several uh, tests that the way I'm taping now is the best solution for me with my condition. And I truly believe that the way I tape is the best way for the average person. Hey guys, thanks for watching this taping video. I hope it was informative and gave you some things to think about. I hope it'll help you in the future on how you tape your fingers. We've got a lot of great ideas. And if you really like this and you thought it was informative, please click the like button and also subscribe to my channel. As a matter of fact, while you're at it, 
why don't you copy and paste this link into your social media and share it with other people? I'd truly appreciate it. You have no idea how much I would appreciate it. So you guys have a great day. Make it a good one. Larry out.